Again, I'm Brian Hewitt, the man, and we come upon you on this great glorious evening here in the Pacific Coast region of North America. We're here in Los Angeles. I'm Brian Hewitt, the man, along with Anita, my wife, and the man we bring you our MCN Ministries Bible LA on the Hewitt channel, as well as the Brian Hewitt channel over YouTube, Hewitt channels over Ustream, and you can pick up our links at Facebook, Twitter, and Dig, and many other uh, online links and news newspapers. We're going to continue with our 6 a.m. broadcast here. That and topic we've been teaching on is prayer. So let's get right to the meat and potatoes of our service. Let's get on, get into some prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, your endless rhyme of your love, that brings us to your straight and narrow, where many are called but few are chosen. We thank you for this time of truth, that this time of truth, bringing us to your endless rhyme of eternity. The truth shall set us free and give us the strength of the glory of the prayer, the fasting, for we are redeemed. And we focus on our reality of our redemption with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, we come to you as a relationship. And with a relationship, iron sharpen irons as we move away from our paths of sins into the glory of God. Our relationships can really help us out in, in tune and bring us into the promises of God ever so stronger. So with this time, <clears throat> our endless rhyme that we give each of us, we want the power of prayer to come before us and give us that will, give us that strength that we all need. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 is our foundation scripture for the evening. And we're speaking on the topic of prayer. For the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even to the divining asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is quick, but God does move on his pace, powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. It is the truth, piercing even to the divining asunder of the soul and spirit, giving you his spirit, his soul, his time, placing you where you are to be and moving you into the path of the glory so you can pre so you can ask God to command your life so you can present his works to you. For faith without works is, is dead. And a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, no longer are you conniving mischievous sinful practices upon our hearts. God has given you a new heart. We are going into the intense, from away from the ways of men, but into the intense and the thoughtfulness that God has always wanted us to be. Praying as we make our lives more powerful, we realize, dear God, I would like my prayers to be more powerful. I pray the scriptures, as I just heard Brother Brian say, God's word is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. <clears throat> Where do I go from here? When we speak and pray the scriptures, we are coming into agreement with God. And His power is released to answer our prayers. But remember, answered prayer starts in heaven. Okay, brethren? Answered prayer starts in heaven. doesn't start on our kitchen table. doesn't start during our lunch break. It starts in heaven. Uh, again, I cannot stress the factor <clears throat> enough that is focus on our reality of our redemption with God. Let's move into the practice of prayer. Let's move into what Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, 12 says. God's word is alive, powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. God, can our prayers override the will of another person? No. God has given man free will, and God will never force a person against his free will. Though God has chosen you, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, Matthew 6, 13. God has chosen you to be a habitation for his glory on this earth. And the spirit and the bride say, come, let him that hear it say, come, and let, and let that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him come take the word, take the water of life freely. And that's Revelation 22, 17. God gives everyone a will. 
take your will, put that into, into prayer time. The will of prayer, that is what we're speaking of tonight. Why then do we pray, we pray for the unsaved? Because we at one time were unsaved. Because there's a spiritual warfare taking place. And we combine the powers of darkness and prayer. Imagine instead of taking a gun to blow someone's head off to prove a point, we're taking this person into the reality check of prayer. We can bind the powers of darkness in prayer. We can bring God's influence to people in prayer. Let me give you God's love, God's ministry through his, through his examples here. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, Jesus, and saying, Lord, have mercy upon me, my son, for he is a lunatic and, and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire, and often into the water. I brought on him unto the disciples. They could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil and departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. That's from Matthew 17, 14 through 18. Notice this child had Jesus sovereignly working from the outside upon him. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, We could not, why could we not cast the demon out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Howbeit this, this kind that is demon possessed, go with not out by prayer and fasting. That's from verses 19 through 21 of Matthew 17. Expect miracles to happen when we pray. Again, we have to believe in our heart that God is going to present all of this to us. My wife and I go before God's people every day, whether the internet, in person, we are bringing God's truth. And the truthfulness is what has led us to be persecuted, despised, betrayed, denied. I've survived several assassination attempts. Nobody likes the truth. Nobody likes the practicality, but everyone likes to express their own philosophies of, of impossible tasks that are, could be just of logic. But God brings us beyond logic. God brings us to the Spirit. God brings us to the to Calvary, where His Son Jesus Christ opened up His arms upon us from the cross, got off the cross and hugged us and when we became redeemed, as He cried out, Lord, take me, love me, I'm yours, cover me with the blood of Calvary, baptize me with your blood. Give me the power of your prayer. When we pray through the Scriptures, we are strengthening us from that silent night of evilness that gave us nothing but a black void to the bright nights and the bright days upon us. God's manufacturing a new you. He's presenting yourself on the potter's will. He is circumcising the stony edges of the old heart and giving you that new heart. May we expect, may we expect miracles when we pray. Yes, yes. But never get into the habit of saying what God cannot do. God can do any, everything. There's nothing too hard for God. He is a God of might and miracles. He is a God of might and miracles. O oh Lord, oh Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for Thee. Jeremiah 32:17. And in a sense, all answered prayer is a miracle because the supernatural is moving into the natural. Anytime prayer is answered, it is a classic sense that is supernatural. Supernatural. And there can are there other kind of miracles, miracles of nature where God turns water into wine, heals cancer. Do I believe God does that? Yes, I do. But these are not normal miracles. These are not the normal parts, or normative, I should say. 
in the Bible, miracles had certain things in common. They gave glory to God. They did not give glory to man. They validated the claims of the identity of God, and they advanced God's work significantly. So if you're asking for a miracle for a new car, it may not happen. God's going to bless you with prosperity and abundance, but if it's going to move your God's kingdom, and you, as you move into God's task, yes, you will be blessed with a new car. But if you just say, yeah, give me a new car, half-heartedly, and go about drinking your beer, no, it's not going to happen. God brings us to the advancement of God's work significantly. Significantly. And we do this through the supernatural by the strength of prayer. God is God of might and miracles. Of might and and of miracles. If God has a miracle for you, He will give you a miracle of faith. I never discount miracles. I have been brought out of enough hells and experiences of my life. It was God presenting His love upon me. But miracles are not normative, or else they would not be called miracles. That leads us into our last discussion. How can I know the will of God in prayer? How can I understand the will of God? It's time to move into the power of the scriptures. It is time to move into being connected with God. God wants all of us to stay in His time, His endless rhyme. Coming into the total view. Coming into the newness of the, of the mind. And as we move into this time, God's going to bless you. God's going to cure you. And what more can we say? What more can we express? God is going to bring any lost time that you may have expressed, that you may have experienced, into His time. That will all be brought back to you. You just have to really lift everything up into the name of Jesus. Lift everything up into that his time, his endless rhymes. If we have this, if we have this time, God brings us his realities upon us. God brings us to the moment of our crossroads. Romans ten ten expresses to us, for with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We skip down three verses from Romans 10.10 10 to Romans 10.13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You're part of the whosoever club, as my wife would say. Time to be saved. Time to go forward. Let's go forward in the power of prayer. In the power of redemption. We're turning our lives over to God. Or if we are with someone, you can click on this broadcast right after we're done and bring this person forward in the name of Jesus Christ and get yourself into a Bible believing church focus on your reality of your redemption with God dear God I admit I am a sinner I need your forgiveness do repeat this after me dear God I admit I am a sinner I need your forgiveness I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sins I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me and take control and to help me become the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for the matchless name of Jesus. We are, God, you are redeemed. That's my wife singing in your name. We are singing in, my heart is singing in your name. The angels of heaven are presenting you before God's throne right now, for you are redeemed. Come forward in the power of prayer. Prayer gives you the str strength of the new will, the new you, the renewing of the mind. One mind, one love, one truth. In Jesus' name, we go forward and we love thee. The time, brothers and sisters, of praying the scriptures increases our own spiritual growth. You actually learn what God says about certain situations. By praying His Word, you see His results. God gives you His results. Many people have testified that, that just by praying 
the healing scriptures, they have been healed physically as well as mentally. You can live a stress-free life only just pray because when you pray, you are turning the situation over to God. You're taking the situation out of your hands and putting it into, the, into God's hands. You're re you are releasing it to God. These scripture prayers are very easy to read and you'll read them every day, every week. It's not so much memorizing the scriptures, but you must live these scriptures. And someone will ask you to pray for them, and you will know what to pray for and what commitment of the scriptures will do for your life. Most people, when they hear the word commitment, the first response is, I don't have time for this. But if you want your circumstances of your life to change, you have to make a, you have to make a commitment to your, to your prayer time through the scriptures. The commitment will give you the victory of your life in your home and you'll be able to handle situations as easily as Jesus could handle could have handled them. Remember the same authority and ability belongs to you. Belongs to you. It doesn't take long to read and to express these prayers. And you can print them out and take them with you. We must express how to to pray in the scriptures by getting ourselves with ministries like ourselves, developing a relationship like us, getting yourself into a Bible-believing church, and really being of one mind and one judgment of Christ, lifting up the two offerings. The first offering is the offering of obedience. The second is your tithes and your offerings. And come travel with us. We are MCN Ministries. Come visit us at bryanthewitt.com. Bryant, B-R-Y-A-N-T, Hewitt, H-E-W-I-T-T, -T, bryanthewitt.com. We will bless you by having, having you a part of our winning team here, God's winning team. And when you put a financial seed into this ministry, it will come back to you 100 fold, 700 fold, from a new house, a new job, new cars, new, new financial prosperity, blessing you and the storehouses that you have in your, in your house, your apartments, your farms, your ranches, will not be room enough as the windows of heaven, heavens open up for you. In the matchless name of Jesus. It is not at all impossible to receive a miracle from the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not at all impossible to see this happen at all. We must understand the word commitment does back us all off, does give us that, oh, I don't have time for this. Commitment of prayer will change the world around you. Will help those that are in need. As my wife and I went to Kenya, and as we are preparing once again to go back, we're going to Nigeria, Tanzania, Cape Town, South Africa, Australia in 2013, India at the end of 2012, England will be there twice, France, Canada, of course, and our work continues here in Los Angeles, California of the United States. We'll be going up to the Upper Great Lake region to spread the living word of God in the next few months. So, brothers and sisters, commitment to prayer. Be express that will of God to you and for you. In the strength of God's will, His loving scriptures come true. Present your life unto God so He can command your life so you can present His works to the throne and before the throne. For faith has, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. From Hebrews 11, verse 1. We are going to understand the power of prayer. How, what are we going to express? Exactly. God created the heavens and the earth by speaking them into existence. Are you with me so far? God created the heavens and earth by speaking them into existence. By praying the scriptures out loud, you are speaking God's will for your life into existence. He can hear you if you pray silently, but it is him hearing the spoken word that makes him move in on your, beh on your behalf. Hearing the word is what causes your faith to rise, not just reading it. This is power in the spoken word. God is not hearing what comes from the flesh or from your lips. He's hearing what comes from your heart. 
read, express yourself, pray in the Spirit, as I said a few nights ago. Get into the art of praise and worship. You can start getting involved with small group Bible studies. Praying for our governments, praying for our leaders, knowing that God is going to put his leaders in countries, in regions of the world. Because today's leaders are just pretty much killing their own citizens as we look at Syria. As we look at other countries, uprising after uprising. We are living at the end times of end times. We do not know when each of our times are about to end. We don't know at all. We must pray for the church, pray for the for the peace of Jerusalem, for those who pay, pray for Jerusalem shall prosper. The strength of our prayers understands the promises of God that come to our life, giving, giving us his time, his expression. From Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12, I am ready to perform my word. Write these down, please. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. That's from John 16, 24. Matthew 21, 22. Whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Jeremiah 33. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And John 14, 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Brethren, this is not a complicated level three mathematical strategic math class. This is not pondering endless nights of hours in the four o'clock in the morning hours of great philosophy. Yet if we take this definition of philosophy one step above it, which is the science of knowledge, knowledge of the fear of the Lord, then let's use what we have as far as intelligence Let's use our giftings what God has given us and ask anything in the name of Jesus. I will do it, Jesus says in John 14, 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 16, 23. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Jesus, we ask that you give this country, all of North America, our leaders, prime ministers, our presidents, our governors, everyone, a peace of mind, the clarity of the heart, so they can see the truth of leadership that you've always wanted them to be, the truth of the expression of your growth going towards this new day, and going into our time, God's endless rhyme called eternity into the kingdom. Job twenty two twenty one. Acquaint thyself with him and be at peace, and all good shall come unto thee. All good shall come unto thee. And what did God say as our guarantee? You hear me say this pretty much every, every broadcast. Matthew six thirteen. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. It's yours. Do I care what man can say unto me or do unto me? Hell no. No. I laugh at Satan in the face every day. Every day. I move upon God's reality and truth. I am not feared what man can say unto me, do unto me, or rumorville, because God dismisses the rumor rumorvilles by speaking the truth, which these people cannot handle. All I have to say is, Jesus! And they flee. Or they come up with a lame excuse, I don't want to offend anybody by speaking the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me, Satan. Job twenty two twenty seven. You will make your prayer to him, he will hear you. You will make your prayer to him, he will hear you. First John five fourteen. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God's will. He hears us. Hearing is receiving, but is hearing done. God's will. 
He does hear us. What more can we express or do? Our meditations of our heart, our strength of our words, to be acceptable by our Lord, our strength, our strength, our Redeemer. Are we focusing of where we are in the now, which is today, the now of faith? Are we lifting up our prayers and repentance daily so the new mercies of God's promises can pour down upon you every day? John 14, 13, And whatever you ask in my name that, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, that I will do. Jesus name the power of prayer you've probably been with with me for the past few nights and you can see this one topic prayer is endless it does not break apart does not does not cease to exist there's a topic that we can be speaking on for months if not years Isaiah 55 11 so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth it shall not return void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For which I sent it. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you desire, and it shall be done to you. John fifteen seventeen. It shall be done for you. It shall be done unto you, for you. Let my prayer be set before you as incense, the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Psalms 141, verse 2. And, so, and Psalms 91, verse 15. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him show him my salvation dear Jesus we come to you this night this expression this reality to come before us we ask you to come and bring us into a relationship with each individual have them come visit us at bryanthewitt.com have them be financial pro financial partners into our ministry as we travel as we have new traveling partners new medical partners coming before us as we grow into the strengths of Kenya, Tanzania, Nigeria, Cape Town, England, France, Canada, Australia, India, the United States, all, we knock down all the borders that were created by man, and we give the new heart of you, God, to all the continents of the world in the matchless name of Jesus, for we are redeemed. We are redeemed, and with long life we will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Anita and the man, love thee, Brian Hewitt here. We thank you for your time, and until next time, we walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir, adios, good day for the people.